What's going on guys and welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Garrett. I'm a seven figure Amazon seller showing you guys how you can make a living off Amazon as well. We have a good video for you guys today. Today's video is going to prepare you for the holidays to come. Halloween, Thanksgiving, Christmas, a lot of profit, a lot of opportunity baked in to each of these individual holidays. And so we want to make sure you guys have the strategies, the methodologies, the tactics to be able to proactively source and find products that are going to increase in demand and increase in profit. So stay tuned for the video, watch the video, learn and take notes and apply these processes to your own sourcing in your business. Enjoy. Now the point of this particular video is to give you guys the tools, give you guys the strategy and prepare you to be able to take advantage of some of the seasonal opportunities that are coming your way in the next couple months within Q4, right? So this video is being recorded late September. So now is the time to be able to start preparing and looking for opportunities for Halloween. And of course, obviously for Thanksgiving and Christmas, right? Those are gonna be the three big, big holiday opportunities that we have coming down the pipe. Today's video is gonna be specifically revolved around Halloween, right? Because that's the next closest holiday that's gonna be, be re requiring um, some attention within the next couple of weeks to make sure you are prepared. But this same strategy, tactics, methodologies can be applied to any sort of season, July 4th, Easter, Christmas, Thanksgiving, right? Any holiday, any season type of product you're looking to source, this same strategy can be cross-functional um, and apply to any season that you have. All right, so we are here in Keep a Product Finder. Should look pretty familiar to you guys by now, right? And I already let off alluding to the fact that we're going to be focused on Halloween products, right? And so I have a I have a very specific way to go about finding and sourcing for seasonal demand, right? First and foremost, we are going to use a handy dandy filter um, inside Keep a Product Finder. It's going to be a text filter, and essentially all this is doing is it scouring all of um, Amazon's product titles, or the text in the titles, for a specific keyword, right? And so I'm just gonna use Halloween, the text Halloween, as our entry point, right? You can see there's 8 million Halloween titled products, right, a title with Halloween in the title, um, across the entire Amazon catalog. Now, a couple things to note here. There's 8 million products that have Halloween in their product title, but that's far too many for us to sift through and find the opportunities within, right? So we want to use and leverage some more Keep a Product Finder's power uh, in trying to narrow the search down, right? But also secondary to that is I'm not actually, surprisingly enough, necessarily interested in products with Halloween in the title to profit off of. The goal of this sort of search is to find an entry point, to find a portal to look for other valuable information in, right? And it's all going to kind of make sense in a couple minutes as I demonstrate the entire process, but bear with me, wait to the end of the video, it will all make sense, right? But I already mentioned, we want to note, we want to narrow this down even more, right? And now we can't necessarily use sales rank as a velocity indicator, right? We want to narrow this down to Halloween products that are moving come that season. But if you notice, right, if we scroll to the top and look at the sales rank filter, the current sales rank is not going to work, right, because we don't expect Halloween products to pick up for another couple weeks. So we're not going to be able to use our current sales rank as a, as a qualitative measure to filter on velocity. We also obviously can't use historical sales rank for the same sorts of reasons, right? A Halloween product wouldn't have any sort of reasonably good sales rank in looking in the past 180 days re retrospectively. Right, so none of these filters really get the job done in terms of filtering this 8 million products down to something that's a warmer sample of products, a more interesting sample of products. So we need another way. We need a sort of a backdoor approach to filter on this velocity that we're looking for. Right, and so that's going to come all the way at the bottom. Uh, it's kind of like a unique, interesting... Hey, quick commercial break. I appreciate you guys supporting and following the channel. If you are enjoying this particular video, which I'm assuming you are if you're still watching it to this point, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Scroll down, hit that subscribe button. It helps me out, helps the channel out. Let's get back to the content. But that's going to be it for today's video. Hope you enjoyed something. Hope you will learn something. If you did, drop a like, drop a comment, subscribe to the channel, and we'll see you in the next one. Um, creative way to filter on velocity, and it's going to be embedded within our review count. 
right? Because reviews accumulate over time on products that sell, right? Customers re leave reviews when products sell. The more product sells, the more reviews they earn, right? That's just kind of how it works. Now, the cool thing about reviews is they don't leave a product. And so Halloween products that are selling year after year after year within a specific time frame, regardless of that time frame, they are accumulating reviews. And so we could actually use this review count, historical review count, as an indicator to weed out a lot of the products that aren't simply selling at all. Right? So if we use a simple 100 in terms of a quantitative metric for reviews, that's going to, oops, I uh, didn't mean to do that. I meant to use, so that filtered us down a bunch, 173,000 products that have 100 minimum reviews. Now, if we can filter this a little more, right, we had 500, that's going to go down even more. But before we narrow it down even more, I want to do another filter. I want to add in one more filter. Um, and so this is more like an experience thing, and it wouldn't necessarily expect you guys to know this off the bat, but just how Amazon works, there is a lot of private label opportunity with in seasonal products, right? And so we're actually going to set just a minimum FBA offer count of two to be able to eliminate some of the private label products that are inevitably going to be coming, right? I wouldn't necessarily set this too aggressive if it's something that's off, off, like significantly off season. So we're not right now, maybe we'd have some extra time. We're doing some Easter sourcing. I wouldn't set this at three or four, right? Because we don't want to, wouldn't necessarily expect a whole bunch of sellers to be having listed a Easter product now. But now we should be fine with a minimum of two, right? If you don't want to, if you're worried about missing some interesting products, you don't want to um, mess with the FBA account, right? You're worried about not people or people not having joined the market yet. You can just also um, counteract this sample size by just increasing the review time, the review count, right? We can use even more, right? But being that we're in late September, I would expect some um, sellers to start to join some of these markets. So I'll just say that too. Uh, and that gets us down to 1,800 products, right? So we can start to sift through our results. And the, I mean, the results are already pretty apparent, right? A lot of this stuff is, is going to be private label-ish, right? Um, super, I mean, a lot of this isn't going to be necessarily interesting, but what I'm interested, what I'm looking for at this point in time is just something that's brand name that you can see that sort of increase in demand come net last year. Um, and this Skittles, Halloween, Halloween Sheikers, uh, Skittles, this may be something that's a starting point. And again, I'm not, I don't even necessarily care about this particular Skittle product, right? It could be profitable, it could not be, it doesn't necessarily matter. The information that we realize from this particular listing is going to be a whole lot more interesting than the couple hundred hours, a couple thousand hours that we may be able to, we may be able to, um, to make from this, right? And this is what the interesting thing is. This right here, right? Because we acknowledge that obviously the sales rank dropped. Ooh, I left, I lost my uh, track. We acknowledge that Halloween stuff is going to increase in demand year in, year out, right? Obviously around September, October time frame. We also realize that that's when we want to be joining the market. And anyone that's probably joining the market at this time is looking for these sorts of things. And it's probably pretty smart, right? And so Kipa actually does us a favor by giving us information into all of these storefronts at this point in time, right? So this is kind of like the money making time for this particular product here in October. That's when the sales rank is the lowest, right? It gets down to probably, you know, the te teens of grocery, um, 20s, 30s, right? So this isn't gonna be the fastest moving Halloween product at all by any stretch of the imagination. But there's 50 people that were on this at this particular time. Now in this case, doesn't necessarily have a buy box. So maybe right here, we'd be able to learn some stuff, right? But in theory, if something had a buy box last season, we'd be able to go into the buy box statistics, go to 365, and kind of go back to last year's buy box rotation to start to pick apart those storefronts and keep an eye on them as we approach this coming year. All right, so this is a perfect example. Uniquely is Elizabeth, 66 reviews, probably an OA seller. 11 months ago, they were on this particular product. So what's 11 months ago at this point in time? last September-ish, right? And so this is something interesting, right? And so we can click into this store um, and start to leverage their information. Now, the hypothesis here is 
that if they were selling a Halloween product last year, right, they would join the market that was interesting, they are likely looking for this sort of stuff this coming year, right? So they may, they may have other Halloween stuff that we had not even have been thinking of to source. They may, exactly right here, my point exactly, perfectly proven, right? It's just like I planted it there. This is a Halloween product that we had no idea existed that we could see in the keeper chart on the bottom right. Ooh, my, uh, my mug is in the way, but you can see it. Um, last November, last October, sales rate shot down. Price was $10, $12, whatever it was. We don't know how much we can buy it for. And then the off-season sales rate drop, scoots back up. And now, this year, price or sales rate is coming back down. Price is probably going to go back up. These are the sorts of products that we're looking for. We're looking to leverage smart, intelligent stores to be able to reference their information as a shortcut to find this sorts of products. And so we can continue to go through this store, right, looking for other Halloween products. But we could also back out and rinse and repeat, right? So if there's an, so another seller, 235, 11 months, same sort of deal, right? We can look into this seller and see what sorts of products they're selling, right? Looking for other Halloween-ish related products, Lego Halloween cat. This is probably going to go up in demand and up in price in the next couple of weeks, right? And so we're, we're slowly starting to kind of create this story, create this approach, another Halloween related product went down in demand or went up in demand last season, right? So you can see it's starting to work. And these sorts of products are naturally going to be a little bit profit, more profitable, a little bit more interesting than if we were just to blindly be searching, right? And so that's kind of the port approach. We're using products in a Keeper Product Finder sort, search that are very strategic to find interesting sellers doing interesting things as we get ready for this particular season, right? And so if we're doing this for Thanksgiving, we use Thanksgiving as a keyword entry point. Um, we could even create a, even a more interesting sample size, right? So if we say we want to take away right this uh, add to us, right? So maybe we do 500, 900 products, 1,000, 500 products. As we raise our review count, products are going to sell more and more, right? Maybe we want to get rid of the Amazon, right? We come down here, control F O O S. If you want to uh, find a sh quicker 80%, that's going to join those down even more, right? So we know we just really removed Amazon from the equation. Still a lot of like uninteresting products that, you know, there's very boxy looking, right? But we see our Skittles here. We see some grocery here I'm looking for other name brands that are interesting, right? Maybe we want to add a grocery catalog because there's just naturally a lot of seasonal opportunity in groceries. Six products left. What is this? Strawberry, uh, something, something. So none of these really existed last year as we would want. So you can see this a little bit, right? Last year, demand shoots, uh, sales rank shoots down. Price doesn't really do much though. So let's get rid of this grocery filter. And just keep finding, keep finding interesting products inside name brands that lead us to more interesting things, right? And the the real gem of information in this whole process is leveraging last year's buy box. It's leveraging the sellers again. So this, look at the sales rank last year, shot up obviously in the off season, but comes right back down. So this maybe not necessarily be um, particularly. I'm looking for that like cyclical nature, right? So here, for example, what is this? Uh, I don't even know what this is. Oh, like scrunchies or something, right? Last November, October, sales rank was really low. In the off season, sales rank was high. Sales rank dropped again, right? If there's a lot of sellers that were in this product last year, now this is something that is very, very much interesting. Um, but it looks like there was only the same two sellers, so that's probably not very, very interesting. Um, the last thing I will show you guys, last thing we'll try, is we're going to back off our review count just a bit and increase our sellers, right? Because I am hypothesizing that that will just provide us some more interesting information. So if we raise this to four, 155 products. 
I'm looking for some good name brand products. Gummy candy, body parts. Ha! Perfect. Exactly what we're looking for. All right, we click in here. Obviously, we're going to see that same cyclical nature. This is probably something that's bought from a Walmart, grocery store, etc., etc. We scroll down. Bang. Perfect, perfect. Exactly what we're looking for. Right? Price goes up. Sales rank drops. All these sellers, the 6, 7, 13 sellers, we can go into the buy box. The buy box existed, so that's a plus. Right? And we'll be able to see every single seller that was on this product last year. Right, 10 months ago, 280, uh, nine months ago, maybe 11 months ago, right here. Right, anyone that's been that was selling this product 11 months, 10 months ago at that increased price point is exactly who we want to be leveraging heading into this season, but also other seasons. Right, they're probably doing the same sort of due diligence for other seasons Christmas, Easter, how, uh, um, Thanksgiving, all the other holidays, right. Probably the same sort of methodology. And this is the practice, this is the tactic, this is the process that you can take and apply across any other season that you're looking to source and to prepare. Uh, and don't, for, don't forget, as you find these products, make sure you store them in a Google Sheet to be able to reference year after year, time after time, and continue to benefit from the efforts that you put in for every particular year. That's it for today's video. If you liked the video, subscribe to the channel, comment on the video, and we will see you in the next one.